play a game that's reserved for the elite athlete. And you remind yourself of the old saying, failure to prepare is preparing to fail. You know that in the NBA, the real preparation begins when the games end. You also know that success during the season is a direct result of sweat during the summer. So you push yourself harder than you thought you could. Because if you don't work, you don't win. And everyone wants to win. It's the day of the 2008 NBA Draft. Soon, the moment that Derrick Rose has been dreaming about since he was 12 years old will finally arrive. With the first pick in the 2008 NBA Draft, the Chicago Bulls select Derrick Rose. A native of Chicago's South Side, Rose was chosen to help turn around the fortunes of his hometown Bulls, who missed the playoffs last season for the first time in four years. He's a 6'3", 190-pound point guard whose strength and quickness set him apart. In order to live up to the high expectations of a number one draft choice, Derek will need to learn the ropes of the NBA while also becoming a leader of his team. Oh, he corkscrewed his way through two defenders. One month earlier, Rose works out twice a day at a high school gym in Santa Monica, California. His workout consists of a strength routine designed to solidify his body's core and a set of shooting drills that will help him adjust to the speed of the NBA. There's no room for mistakes. That's what really motivates me. I just come in here and just try to be the best I can. You know, he's got some ways to go before he gets where he wants to be. You know, that's an all-star, it's an MVP, and it's winning NBA championships. I gotta shoot it up! I just want to be perfect, really. My jump shot wrong or something like that, layup wrong or something like that. I just want people to tell me because I just want to make myself better. Oh, I'll be back. I'll be back, dude. On the sidelines of the same gym, seven foot twins Brooke and Robin Lopez prepare for their workout. The 260 pound centers from Stanford University are working hard to improve their stock in the draft. Their daily regimen includes stretching, weight training, and a series of low post offensive drills that build stamina while simulating NBA game conditions. Brooke Lopez is an athletic big man whose size and scoring ability paid dividends on draft night when the rebuilding New Jersey Nets selected him 10th overall. Robin is widely considered to be the more aggressive, defensively oriented Lopez brother. His toughness in the paint was one of the main reasons the new look Phoenix Suns chose him five picks later. Come up, stay low, stay low. Now. Before their NBA dreams became a reality, the Lopez brothers had to put in the necessary work to improve their chances of success at the next level. A lot of opportunities come out of being able to play basketball, you know, have basketball as your job, so I'm just really important. Good. All right, Robin. One more. I mean, I personally don't think I've fallen out of shape since the college season, but I need to get on a different level of fitness for the NBA, obviously. Stay low. I knew right away, besides their skills were great, that they were going to be great pros because their fitness and their bodies were just unbelievable to me. As the Lopez twins and Derrick Rose work out in Southern California, another group of rookie hopefuls prepare for the NBA draft on the west side of Chicago. Keep the same set! They've gathered at Attack Athletics, the new state-of-the-art facility run by legendary basketball trainer Tim Grover. Time is getting short but that does not change our routine. Under the watchful eye of Grover, who has worked with dozens of NBA stars, including years spent with Michael Jordan, these young players complete intense conditioning sessions and on-the-court drills in the hopes of improving their draft status. Here, it's more like a crash course. We got six, eight weeks. Drop those hips more, drop those hips. There you go, like that. We gotta get their bodies to be able to do certain things and being able to do it quicker, better than everybody else. Good job. Everybody got one here? It's like a very, very high-end basketball-related boot camp. No player has benefited more from Grover's expertise than Jason Thompson. The hard-working but little-known big man from Ryder University overcame the stigma of playing at a small school and shot up the charts on draft night. To everyone's surprise, he was selected by the Sacramento Kings at number 12. Oh, 
Not only does the 6'11", 250-pound Thompson provide the Kings much-needed rebounding help, he also brings a multi-dimensional offensive skill set to the team. But it wasn't long ago that Jason's NBA future was uncertain. As he worked on his conditioning and fundamentals with Tim Grover in Chicago, he was still concerned about being overlooked in the draft. It's going to be hard on me, but I worked out too hard to, you know, give up now. So, you know, that's why I'm here right now, working out with, you know, the best guys. Use your hands and your feet to get open. Use your hands and your feet. You know, he sits down with you and, and lets you know what you're going to do and what you need to improve on and what scouts think that, you know, you're good at and still need to improve on. That's it. There you go. You know, I just want to give confidence to guys that are at smaller schools that, you know, you can still have a chance to if you have the talent and the heart enough to, you know, to play in the NBA. If anyone knows what it's like to be overlooked, it's Ryan Anderson. The 6'10", 235-pound forward from the University of California has been underestimated his entire career. And despite being drafted by the New Jersey Nets with a 21st overall pick and displaying a wide array of offensive skills early in his rookie season, Anderson still attracts doubters. But making it to the NBA is not enough for Anderson. In order to shed his underdog image, he knows he'll need to improve his strength and agility. His post-practice workouts consist of basketball-related fitness drills designed to increase his foot speed and build his upper body. The way you practice is the way you're going to play. So, yeah, it's been uh, very crucial for me as a rookie to come in and work hard. Here we go. Get to the ring. Get there. Good. That's it all right there. There you go. People don't believe I can do things, and, and my, my goal is really to prove them wrong and become the best player I can be. Good. Get to that ring. Explode to that ring. Anybody who people kind of count out a little bit or don't think they're as good as they are, if you're any kind of a competitor, you're going you're gonna to succeed. And he's quite a competitor. My dream was to play in the NBA, and I'm here now. I'm not going to take a day off. Welcome back to NBA Fit. One month before the 2008 NBA draft, Derrick Rose is hard at work building strength and perfecting the skills that will make him worthy of a first overall selection. Knowing that you're going to be playing against all-stars and knowing that I can play with them, I think I can play with them. I'm going to try to make an impact right away. What we were doing was a technique that involves using your entire body versus just isolating muscle groups. So we try to do things that mimic all of his positions on court. That's the, the best way to train your core. That's a big part of your game is your core. As long as I'm getting my core strong enough, I think I'll be fine. Six. Seven. Him being an exceptional athlete, like, he was able to pick it up like that. When we first started working out, he wasn't out of shape, but he could be in better shape. He comes out now, this fourth, fifth week of working out with him, and he's really, you know, a, a different player. Any, anybody get by anybody, but what are you going to do here to get it off, you know what I'm saying? The workout was extremely tough. We did a lot of shooting drills. Good, go, good. That's it, Derek. Quick pull. And really just getting our release off kind of quick so that the defender can contest it. It takes a really great player to be able to get hit, get hit, get hit for the third time and then make the shot. Oh, go deep. Be a pro now. Be a pro. Oh, be a pro. Oh, good. Oh, good. 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 Doing all these workouts with the pads. In the game, you'll be oh. used to people bumping you, so it really helps. Oh, oh, short. Flat, dog. Derek, finish your shot. Finish your shot. Back door. Now, if I critique him a little bit, he's cool with it. He understands. He walked away, ran down. You know what I'm saying? Finish your shot every single time. I do. And with Derek, usually you only have to tell him once. What do you got? Oh, let's go. Never mind basketball. He's a great kid, and so it's really easy to work with a guy like that who's not only a great person, but he's motivated to be the best in the world, and that's where I want him to be. I want him to be the best player in the world. Twin. We now return to NBA Fit. On Chicago's west side, rookie hopefuls rely on the guidance and knowledge of renowned basketball trainer Tim Grover to help them prepare for the NBA draft. Six, go. I got you, man. I ain't going to let you fall. Just hold that position. I ain't going to let you fall. Two, one, let's go. Ah. Ah. 
having a relationship with the guys that we've worked with in the past. Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, Akeem Olajuwon, Scottie Pippen, Dwayne Wade. I mean, there's no other staff out there that can offer what we offer him from an experience standpoint. Every time he makes contact with you, you gotta make contact with him. You gotta get into the guy, man. There you go, you gotta get into him. I know you worked out with Jordan, so, you know, if Jordan trusts him, then everybody else can too. What I'm passing on to these individuals is stuff that we've learned from the best. Oh, just the, the footwork, you know, it's, it's, a lot, it's like a dance out here, you know. None of this works if you can't hit that shot. My instructors will tell you, this is why you're doing this. This is when to use it, this is when not to use it. It's a learning process, it's an educational process. When you catch it, your first movement should be up, not down. He's definitely a big known guy, and most of those guys, you know, they'll just tell you to do something and then they'll just leave. But well, Tim will be there and help us out, you know, as much as possible. And it's real, you know, comforting to, you know, guys that are trying to get in the draft. Okay, now you take this, you come here, boom. Okay, and then go, okay? A versatile big man from a small school, Jason Thompson must work extra hard to improve his conditioning and low post fundamentals in order to make his NBA dream come true. You know, myself, I go, you know, double session workouts, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and then and get a lift in, and then maybe even stay uh, after and get some shooting as well. Jason's a very extremely hard worker. Uh. That's it. Shoots the ball fairly well, but he's he's a bruiser type in there. He's going in there to do all the dirty work. He's the guy that brings the shovel and the pail to work every single day. You gotta seal and make contact. To, uh, offensive foul. You cannot extend. Can't extend. You know, I was a little unsure of some of the footwork and all that stuff, but now, you know, I learned a lot of it. And, you know, the workouts and stuff, I'm starting to do stuff that they taught me, and, you know, they're really enjoying that. I'm, you know, doing some of the moves without even them telling me how to do them anymore. Jason, snatch the ball out of his hands. Snatch it out of his hands. There you go. Some workouts that you have, you do it to get stronger. But with this one, you know, you get your conditioning up as well. You know, you might see guys, you know, huffing and puffing at the end of the day. But you know that you're working, you know, real hard and, and just trying to get strong as possible. Although he has finally made it to the NBA, New Jersey Nets forward Ryan Anderson cannot relax for a moment if he wants to prove his doubters wrong. My college coach used to tell me, get comfortable being uncomfortable. That's something I've thought about a lot, uh, especially you know, during conditioning. Just turn, throw it as high as you can, straight up. Here we go. We take exact movements they use in the game and replicate them with a 16-pound medicine ball where he has to explode to the basket. You know, we try to overload that movement and then give him a regular ball. And when he gets that regular ball after three throws with the med ball, it's like a pee. It's an instant gratification for me. It's an instant transfer of, wow, I see what this does. I see how it helps me. Down low in the post, if you get a pass, you gotta keep it up higher or else guys are just gonna strip it. So having a medicine ball that's a lot heavier than a regular basketball, having to basically keep it over your head and, and throw it, that, that makes it a lot easier when it's just a normal ball. Keep it high, keep it high, keep it high. So the biggest thing with this thing is we're trying to keep, teach big men with the balls, all of them, to keep it high. Okay, Johnny's gonna give you three directions. Here we go, ready? Good close out. Let's go. Get there, get back. Good, here we go, okay? Here we go, let's go. That drill helped me a lot, uh, my defense positioning and lateral quickness. Good, okay. It makes it a, a lot easier when the band's off you to move, move quickly. These bands are making him go faster than his body's normally going. So we're over speed training that cutoff step. Good. It's a great drill for guys who are maybe you know, not as quick on their feet and need to work on their, you know, stopping a guy dribbling at you. There's four bands that's pulling, plus me giving a little bit extra oomph on to it. If you don't move your feet, you're going to be on your face. That's what it comes down to. So your feet have got to move much faster than they've ever moved before. Two good back down steps, get right to the front of the rim, either a little baby hook or dunk it, trying to make him more explosive to the basket. Get there. Good, drive with that left foot. Come on, drive with that left foot. Don't come off of both. The more we can do of that, the more body, their bodies can be trained in, in that type of an overload system. Your body become accustomed to it and you can, uh, you can improve these guys. Even in the high level athletes they are, you can see improvement. Drills like that, they can get tiring and, and uncomfortable. But, but the trick really is to just kind of block that out. Let's go, drive the basket, drive those last two steps. Get to the rim, good. Get to the rim, get to the rim, come on. 
Get to the rim. It's really kind of a mental thing whether you want to work hard or not. I mean, if you want to work hard and get that last dunk, you can go up and get it. I mean, you, you might be a little more tired afterwards, but basically you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. That's that's my uh, motto. Yeah, that's kind of what I live by. Yeah. Wait, wait. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it, buddy. <laughs> Welcome back to NBA Fit. New Jersey Nets rookie forward Ryan Anderson is motivated by critics who question his ability and athleticism. The 20-year-old, who plays with both power and finesse, has performed under the radar for most of his basketball career. And though he's reached the game's highest level, he has no plans of slowing down. Since the season has begun, he's devoted himself to a challenging post-practice fitness routine to increase his upper body strength and improve his foot speed. It's an honor to do something people don't think I can do and then maybe, you know, they'll respect me for it next time. But it, it definitely fuels me. I mean, it makes me want to go out every day and, and prove people wrong. In the NBA, everybody's at the peak of their athleticism, strength. You know, these are the best athletes in the world. That's the stuff that we do every day, that, that kind of stuff that is going to make me stronger, make me quicker, make me more athletic. He gets it. You know, he gets it. He wants to be a professional. And that's huge for a young guy. Yeah, I mean, get some muscles going. We'll be feeling this a little tomorrow, so, yeah. Come on, don't chop your steps. Don't chop your steps. Get it. Come on. These are all things that are going to help me in the long run and things that basically I'm going to have to build off of them to uh, get to that level of my career where I want to get. You know, I made a name for myself at, uh, you know, a small school in New Jersey. Knowing that I put Ryder on the map a little bit, and, you know, it's a good feeling to know that I was a part of that. Before becoming a lottery pick in the 2008 draft, many believed that Kings forward Jason Thompson was a long shot to make it to the NBA. But the versatile big man from a small college has proved the naysayers wrong with the help of trainer Tim Grover, who worked with Jason on his conditioning and fundamentals. It's almost here, you know, a month away till draft day, so I'm just gonna do whatever it takes, you know, to hear my name on you know, June 26th. Well, I'm trying to work on my conditioning, you get stronger, you know, upper body and uh, lower. You know, I want to lose some uh, body fat. So, you know, I've been doing a lot of things and, and the hard work is, has been paying off and, uh, you know, it's really been helping me out. I can definitely tell the difference between the first week, but now I got my wind up and stuff feel good. You gotta trust other people. Just like when you play the game, you gotta trust your teammates. You gotta be able to trust your supporting staff. And we're like a supporting staff to these individuals here. During the past two decades, Grover has been one of the top basketball trainers in the world. At his facility in Chicago, he uses cutting-edge research and teaching methods to help players gain an advantage. Stand firm, get low, Billy, get low. Ben, Ben, handle it, handle it. They gotta believe in what we do because a lot of stuff we're showing them is kinda different for them. We want the guys that wanna work out, but that also wanna learn, and I think that's what makes us different. We teach the game and teach them how the body works here. Brooke can really post you up, hit a jump shot, and Robin, you know, his, he's a great defender, but he has a lot of skill, too. Like I said, their fundamentals are just above where they should be at someone that age. For years, Brooke and Robin Lopez have worked side by side trying to reach the NBA. In June, when Brooke was drafted by the Nets and Robin by the Suns, the seven-foot twin brothers realized their dreams. Duke pushing each other through a series of low-post drills designed to simulate the speed and physicality of the NBA game. Every day of the week, we're pretty much here before um, our shoot-around, just getting a lot of work. Sometimes it may seem like there's no end in sight, especially when you get, you know, maybe near the end of that first week. I think the hardest part is just, um, it's maintaining your focus through, through this whole, you know, three or four week period, but you just got to put it in the back. I've always wanted to play in the NBA, so um, it's nice to see his dream come true, you know, but this is just the first step. Uh, so, you know, it's nice to have someone like, um, you know, a twin brother to go through this with. If it's pick number one, I'll be happy, but it shouldn't matter. I'll just be happy to be a professional basketball player. Since he was a 12-year-old growing up in Chicago, Derrick Rose has had his sights set on playing point guard in the NBA. 
After being selected as the first overall pick in the 2008 draft by his hometown Bulls, he faces the pressure of leading the franchise and living up to high expectations. To prepare for his rookie year, Rose spent weeks working on his conditioning and learning the nuances of the NBA game. A lot of things we work on is getting the right angle, getting the shot off a lot quicker, and becoming more of a better pro. Oh, you pro Derek Good. I'm not like a lazy person, nothing like that. Knowing that if I come in the gym and work hard every day, I'll be um, a decent player in the NBA, hopefully. <laughs> just coming in here, just working out every day hard and being competitive all the time, it helped me a lot. From Chicago. My um, biggest motivation as far as going to be my, my family, making them happy and knowing that all the all work and all the stuff I put them through throughout my whole basketball career paid off. And knowing that I have a future in the NBA, I just can't wait for that.